Have you ever wondered how an app that gives driving directions knows how to turn two points on a map, your starting point and your destination, into a set of left and right turns? There is some math involved, and this math is useful for students learning physics. Let's say you want to get from one point in a city to another, and the two points aren't connected by a straight road. Let's also say that the city is designed on a grid, so you can move horizontally and vertically, but you can't move on a diagonal. The simplest thing you can do is move horizontally as far as you need, then move vertically. The total distance you'll travel is greater than if you were a bird and could just fly from one point to another, but at least the directions are simple. We say that the horizontal and vertical motion are components of the motion when described as a vector, and that the direct path is the resultant vector, which is the sum of these two components. It is useful to think about any vector as being comprised of two components, one horizontal, one vertical. For instance, let's make a vector called vector a that has a horizontal component of plus 6 and a vertical component of plus 2. The resultant vector points rightward and upward. Its length, also known as magnitude, and angle are shown here. What if we wanted to add a second vector called vector b? so that the car moves in two different directions, one after another. For vector b, let's make the horizontal component minus 2 and the vertical component minus 5. The motion that results is the sum of these two vectors. The motion can happen in any order. You could first drive through vector a, then b, or vice versa. When adding two vectors, you can simply add the components separately. Looking at the horizontal components, a is plus 6 and b is minus 2, so the resultant horizontal component should be plus 4. Looking at the vertical components, a is plus 2 and b is minus 5, so the resultant vertical component should be minus 3. Alternatively, we can express the values of vectors a and b just using the sliders. We can specify a magnitude and direction and the program will automatically compute the horizontal and vertical components of each by using trigonometry. For instance, if vector A has a magnitude of 8 meters and an angle of 30 degrees, then we can multiply 8 by the sine of 30 degrees to get the vertical component, which is 4, and we can multiply 8 by the cosine of 30 degrees to get the horizontal component, which is 6.9. One way to think of this is that any vector can be expressed in two different ways, either as two components, horizontal and vertical, or as a magnitude and direction. Converting back and forth between these two representations is a useful skill for the physics student and for the driverless car.